Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the third and final webinar of our Convenience 2020 web series, Revenue Growth, Technology, and C-Store Modernization. I'm your host, Sarah Spaventa, and I have with me our presenter and head of C-Store Sales Solutions, Billy Draper. Today's webinar will be around 25 minutes long with five minutes for Q&A. Please send us your questions in the chat box on the right-hand side, and we will leave time to go through them at the end. If you have any issues hearing us, please let me know once again in the chat box. Um, other than that, I will kick it over to Billy. Thank you, Sarah, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining the third and final part of our Convenient 2020 web series. We've covered in the past some of the disruptions to the space, some of the technology advances, advancements, and uh, just new behaviors and, and strategies that, that are being invested in this space. Today, what we're going to cover is the moments that will matter. Um, and this is going to be an exploratory webinar around customer behavior. Um, that said, let's get right to it. What we're going to cover today, pretty simple. Two things. We're going to talk about some moments of truth for uh, merchants today. And we're going to talk about what it means to put the customer at the center of your strategy as you move forward. It all starts with the stimulus. Based on the past couple of uh, webinars we've had, we've talked about some of the investments that are being made to stimulate the population, stimulate the customers, make you stand out from uh, you know, your competition. As more and more food and beverage merchants become more, more convenient through online ordering, um, and, and simplified offers and uh, picking up digital and, and, and e-commerce stuff on site. They, they, a lot of your competition is now includes Walmarts, includes Dunkin' Donuts, and includes a number of others. So as you start to make advances into their space too, there's this idea that as an example, healthy food options is one of the areas of, of exploration. Um, being someone that comes top of mind to your consumers as a place to eat uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so the stimulus today is all based on some of those advancements that you're currently investing in the market. Here's an example of what you might be doing. Hundreds of heart-healthy options at your convenience. Now, if we take that stimulus, this, once again, it's awareness, and we're just, you know, making this a little bit scientific as we, as we talk about the consumer, but it starts with the stimulus. And, and now it's redefined. The stimulus is not only your heart healthy options at your convenience, so we're offering more fresh ingredients in house than ever before, but now it can be delivered by a third party. So in this example, you can see the stimulus is even being redefined. And this is being redefined because the customer expects certain things. The customer wants convenience. As we talked about, convenience has been redefined. Um, you know, very aggressively over the past couple of years. And so this is what this looks like for you today. Um, it's, it's a combination of do we invest in seamless payment? Do we invest in, you know, these different experiences that make the, steam, the stimulus redefine? And now that's just one moment of truth. And it's the first moment of truth. You put the stimulus in the market, you create the awareness, then someone walks through your doors um, wanting to see if you can deliver on this promise. This is the first moment of truth for those consumers as you change perception. You know, we're no longer offering just the roller grill. We now have the fresh food items, <coughs> excuse me, fresh fruit, cheeses, yogurts, those kind of things that are heart healthy and, and good. It's what the consumers are expecting today. This is that first moment of truth. But we know that consumers need more than this. There's the but here. This is, this is convenience 2020. Remember the future of what's happening. So what happens next after that first moment of truth? It, traditionally, it was, hey, we created awareness. You were stimulated. You acted upon offer. You walked through our doors. You made purchase. Great. Let's get you to do that again. <clears throat> but now the best brands are saying it doesn't end there. There's actually a second moment of truth or moments of truth that follow that initial visit. This is the future of convenience. This is the future of, of, of the customer experience, right? We, we talked a lot about Amazon Go. 
and how that's a seamless experience for customers and how they're going to expand that footprint. We talked about things like Dunkin' Donuts going from Dunkin' Donuts to Dunkin' and offering more specialized beverages. Um, the, 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 there's this idea that there's a second moment of truth that exists beyond just your initial offering. So the best brands do this. And this is otherwise, other, otherwise referred to as the digital customer experience, right? The customer experience is in-store and out-of-store today. And many of, of you on the phone and many merchants and many businesses today, brick and mortar, they consider digital customer experience things like Facebook or email or you know, having a, a location page on Google that's updated with, with, with information. The digital customer experience is, is, is different than that. Those are just ways of creating average uh, awareness, and that's really just more stimulus. So let's talk about what that actually means. Let's, let's talk about it in context to a, a brand that's kind of been disruptive and redefined customers and, and their expectation. Uber. It's, they're pretty easy to talk about because they do a lot of interesting things for their consumers. One, the second moment of truth is, you know, you, you, you provide a service. The service comes. It does what it's supposed to do. But the next thing that comes after I get out of my Uber is tell us how you felt. This is important. This is that second moment of truth where the person that steps out of that car now realizes that Uber doesn't just care about the transaction. They, they, they actually care about the relationship. And they care about the relationship with you one-to-one. -one. And they care about the relationship they have with their drivers. And they care about making sure that their drivers are living up to a brand standard. This is that second moment of truth. And the only way to provide this is if you live in moment with your customers. This can't be, you know, a, a Yelp review that, that lands on a, on a business's page 24 hours later. This can't be, you know, a Facebook review or Google review. This has to, we have to live in moments with our consumers to, to really deliver on that second moment of truth expectation. And so this second moment of truth exists outside the physical confines of your business. And it, is, and it exists in the pockets, palms, and screens of your consumers. That's it. You have to be where they're at. You have to live where they're at. You have to continue the relationship beyond the transaction. And this is where the investment in a, in a tool and a strategy and technology that allows you to do this is going to be very, very crucial as the convenience space gets more competitive as more people who weren't traditionally convenience start to become convenience, right? So the idea is, the second moment of truth should make the customer feel like this. If you don't have a, play, a strategy in place to make the customer feel like this, this is something worth exploring. And you have to be able to engage consumers, right? If they step out of your store, where can I find them next? I don't need to go through a guessing exercise of where to find them. I need to know exactly what they purchased, when they purchased, how much they purchased, how often they purchased, what their preferences are, and how they feel about the business. And then I need to be able to engage them on their favorite channel, remember? Pockets, palms, and screens. That's where the second moment of truth exists. So we have to have a, a strategy to engage them on, on their channels, cross-channel uh, preferences, if you will. We have to be able to hear them. Just like the example of Uber, I step out of that service. I'm then prompted to tell someone how I felt about that. That's good for a number of ways. It, it helps to build that relationship with the customer. It gives the, the operator, the merchant, an operational compass on how to become better. It's a bi-directional kind of data feed, if you will, that, that happens in that exchange. Rewarding people. Now, traditionally, this is what people thought of that, that quote-unquote second moment of truth was, well, let's just give people rewards. Let's make them feel like they're valued. Yes, and that is part of it, but it's not everything. Um, because outside of just your traditional rewards, people want to be surprised. They want to feel like you're providing them something that's unexpected, something they can be excited about. And oh, by the way, and that moment of truth exists a really interesting opportunity. If you can surprise and delight someone, and you can do this based on how they feel about you and what you know about them, make it very hyper-personalized, there's a likelihood that they then become a brand advocate for you. They then go out on their devices and they share a message on Facebook and Instagram and email and text message and tell everybody about how awesome you are. That's earned media that merchants and and businesses are trying so hard to get because it's very, very crucial to acquiring new customers, keeping new customers, and being at top of mind of your customers. So you've got to make the customer feel that too, and then value me. Um, 
you know, Starbucks does a good job of this. The traditional hospitality uh, groups do a good job of this. Your airlines do a good job of this. I spend X with you, give me Y as a status. These are the things that are going to make the difference in the market as, as we inch towards 2020 and beyond. Um, because, you know, the people that are impeding in the, in the space, like the Amazons, et cetera, they're already doing a really good job of this. So you have to have a tool in place to let your consumers know that you value them. You got to make it easy. Once again, going back to the Uber experience, I register a payment card one time. I call up a, a service on, the, on, the, on my phone. I tell them where I'm going. They drop me off. I don't have to worry about exchange of any money, tipping anybody, doing any of that stuff. It's so easy. I don't even have to think about what I'm doing. Um, and, and then afterwards, just prompting me to make sure it is the experience that, they, that, 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 that I want. And then helping, to, helping you to know your customers. Today, a lot of people know their customers by likes and shares and clicks. And they can open up an email or they like one of our posts on Facebook or, or you know, they came in and gave it and they, they redeemed a coupon. And that, that's what they think is knowing a customer. But customers want to know, they, they want you to know their names. They want you to know what they like, what they don't like, um, you know, what their preferences are. So if you can live and you can create a, and, and really live in the moment and create a really solid second moment of truth to your customers, they will become brand advocates. They will spend more money with you. They will prefer you. They will not consider competitors. They'll look at you first before going elsewhere. And so this is the whole idea, and this is, probably looks familiar to some of you that were on the last webinar, but this is the idea. If you want to invest in that second moment of truth that makes your customer feel like they're rewarded, valued, and special, you've got to go beyond the brand-centric functional marketing tools that you have today. You've got to be able to connect things in a meaningful way. I've got to be able to pull preferences out of data. I have to be able to connect you know, meaningful pieces of third-party data with, with data, with first-party data and put that into a platform so I can be more integrated and optimized and create a customer-centric marketing uh, tool and plan. And so this is the kind of stuff that you need to know about your customers. You need to understand their preferences, like when they come in, if they're a top customer, do they spend more than your average customer? How often do they visit? When do they shop? Do they actually promote? Are they actually sharing you know, their experiences with their third party and their first party networks? And or how large are their purchases? And additional detail. When I know this and then I can understand how they feel about us, I can drive a really meaningful relationship with that person. I can deliver on that second moment of truth and make them feel like we don't forget about them after the transaction. I can create an army of brand advocates. And as you can see here, this is a little bit more detail, but this is the stuff that you need to know in addition to did they open my email? Did they like us on Facebook? Um, did they redeem a reward? Did they leave feedback? This is what's valuable. And when you have data like this, you can do really interesting things. Um, and those interesting things align with business. So as an example, you might have customers who visit you more in the morning, right? Um, and you might want to drive traffic in the afternoon because that's typically a slow time. Or maybe you're looking at your hot food items, right? And maybe your breakfast is, is, is moving, but, but some of the stuff that you're offering in lunch and, and, and afternoons aren't. When you have data, excuse me, when you have data like this, you can effectively target people with tools like this to get them to drive traffic, to drive them in the afternoon, to get them to try something new. To get, to, to, to get them experience something they normally wouldn't have. And so the idea is to deliver on that second moment of truth, you have to have the data, then you have to have a tool that aligns with some of the things you're trying to do from a business perspective. And it has to be very easy in order to, to kind of launch campaigns, hyper-targeted, hyper personalized uh, messaging to your audience and constituents. When you do that, this is what happens. You can take an unknown customer, in this case we have it as an unknown email customer, that, that makes, that, that they basically say they don't really care about me after the transaction. When you can start to get some data on them and, and, and put it into a platform that allows you to get a meaningful view of your customers, you can then engage them with campaigns, our loyalty relationship tools, hyper-personalized engagements. And you can see it, 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 this is what happens. The more and more you, you reach out to them and deliver on that second moment of truth that, they, that you value them after the transaction, they can say things like, they value me, they know me, they understand me, I, I, I love them. And now you go from this picture of a customer who you really don't know much about to knowing a lot of detail about. 
And we know when we do that, we can effectively drive dollars and cents for your business. We know we can effectively keep you top of mind. So as more competition enters the market, as more con as convenience changes, that we can create um, customers who prefer you over others. So this is the whole idea of, of, of making sure you have a strategy in place that lives beyond your brick and mortar, lives beyond your transactions, et cetera. Um, I know that gets us a little short, but that opens up a little time for questions here. So um, if we want to go ahead and do that, Sarah and team, we can do that. Um, if not, we can just uh, take the next step and record this and send this out to the group. Yeah, of course. Sounds yeah. great, Billy, and thank you so much. Um, I'm opening up for questions. If you guys have any, please put it in the chat box on the right-hand side. Um, I'll wait a minute or two, and if not, we'll tie this up and um, send it to you, uh, the recorded version, via email. Looks like we're not receiving any questions. I'll, I'll wait a couple couple more seconds to see if anyone has anything that's top of mind. Otherwise, uh, I will end this presentation. Thank you guys for joining. Um, please feel free to email me, sarah.spaventa at thanks.com. That's S-A-R-A dot S-P-A-V-E-N-T-A at thanks.com if anything comes up. Other than that, thank you so much for joining the presentation, and thank you, Billy, um, and everybody have a great day. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye.